Okay, so macOS 13.1 is here and this update has some new features as well as new changes that I've already covered in a separate video But I just thought in this one Let me just show you some of the new settings that I hear courtesy of macOS Ventura 13.1 That you want to be able to change and just better enhance your user experience when it comes to the first point update When it comes to macOS 13.1 now the first one we actually find in our system settings that used to be called system preferences if you open this up and yes I know still even on Mac OS 13.1 you can only change the size by going up and down but you can't actually change the size sideways when it comes to the system settings and the first setting if you go into your Apple ID right there and then go to where it says iCloud you can see when you get to this section here you can go all the way down and you see this new sub menu section that says advanced data protection now if you click there you can see unfortunately advanced data protection is not available in my country and region and this is surprising because i'm actually in canada and canada and the u.s usually are the first countries that get new features like this but at this time it seems to be the u.s mainly and then as mac OS ventura perhaps 13.1.1 grows out this is something that's going to be available for more regions and hopefully they add Canada to that but this is one of those settings that you might want to turn on if you want to further encrypt your data when it comes to your iCloud now device backups messages iCloud drive notes photos like wallet passes safari bookmarks reminders and so on are end-to-end -end encrypted and yes Apple won't actually be able to have access to this information you will personally be responsible for the data and for the backup keys or reset phrases so if this is something that you're going to be turning on or it's available for your region please make sure you don't lose those keys as you'll be responsible for them now that's the first setting the second setting that I wanted to show you that's here with Mac OS 13.1 has to do with with live captions now this we also see in our new system setting app that we have here if you go to where it says accessibility and go to where it says live captions here it's unfortunate that even on Mac OS 13.1 it's still in beta so if you click live captions there you can enable live captions just like that and you can see that in app live captions we have the ability to also enable them when it comes to FaceTime now you see after a few seconds of enabling live captions I get this black bar that's here and sometimes it does show or it tries to depict what I'm saying but most of the times it's just blank like this and I'm just going to go into FaceTime and try initialize a call just to show you how this is going to look and yes that's me that you see by the way so my network is not the best but you can see now that we have this live captions partially working although it's in beta in FaceTime you do get this sub menu in the top menu bar there and if you click there you can see that you have the option to stop live captions and you see that it puts like a pause mark or pause icon on the live caption stay or if you want to start it again you can start it right from there and it's a good thing because you can also change the audio input whether it's coming from the computer or from a microphone and also you can choose keep on screen or type to speak or if you want to restore default so we'll stop live captions you can see that it's partially working in facetime I can't really demonstrate this because my network isn't the greatest but yeah you can see that this is something that's working partially that you can turn on as a setting if we close FaceTime and turn off live captions just to get rid of this bar that you see here we we'll see if you turn it off the bar goes so we've turned off live captions and if we go into our settings and go to the battery section I noticed that after updating to Mac OS 13.1 this setting that says low power mode and it basically explains that your Mac will reduce energy usage to increase battery life and operate more quietly 
this is something that you can turn on if you favor uh, battery life over performance so for me i always favor battery life unless if i'm doing something that i need to get done completely so after updating to mac os 13.1 this was always on battery only which tries to you know operate more quietly but i like to keep it on always but if you're a person that always wants full power and don't mind whether you want a quiet mac or not you can always keep this never and then that means your mac will try you know work faster but might be a little bit louder for me i keep it on always low power mode just to try and prolong my battery life and if need be i can always come into this subsection menu and change it and put it into a new setting also when it comes to this update another change that i wanted to show you has to do again with the new app that we have here thanks to mac os 13.1 and it's this freeform app now you see when you open up this new freeform app you have the ability to see different objects or different you know sketches and brainstorming ideas that you are doing with different people but in initially when you open up your freeform app and you want to invite a collaborator or share your 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 sketchboard or your camp board with someone and you aren't seeing this share subsection you want to be able to change a setting in iCloud because I had to do this initially by going into my Apple ID here and then go to where it says iCloud and then enable freeform iCloud synchronization here after doing that then I was able to go into my freeform app and then in on any of my boards that I was working on I had the ability to share and invite collaborators and be able to see the live input that people have so that's just another change that you might want to change as well and again when it comes to Mac OS 13.1 you can see here on the Apple security page that Apple has released a bunch of new security batches you can see mac os ventura 13.1 release on december 13 uh, 2022 which is today so this update has a lot of stuff that's going on when it comes to security wise and you can see if we to click that link that says mac os ventura 13.1 you can see some of the vulnerabilities that apple is aiming at resolving for example mobile frequency file integrity and that was affecting privacy preferences and also you have some bluetooth and bootcamp and you see that we do have a lot of patches when it comes to security and stability and cves that were reported and you can see that this is more of a security patch update but let's say for example you don't want to upgrade to mac os ventura 13.1 yet perhaps you are happy with mac os 13.0.1 because it's stable enough for you you can go into your system settings just go into settings here and then go to general and go in and then go to where it says software update if you click on the little eye here that besides um, automatic updates just click there you have the ability to just install security responses and system files now this allows you to be able to install some of the security changes and the security updates that you see here without having to install your whole operating systems from mac os 13.0.1 to 13.1 so this is something that you might want to check into and if you also want to keep your app store applications up to date automatically without always having to open up your app store and going into your update page and updating your applications that you see here then you can always come to your system preferences here where we are on the software update page and then you can enable install application updates from the app store if you turn this on then you'll be able to do automatic updates for me i like to do them manually because i want to know what's changed with the applications that i use but for you if this is something that you are interested in then you can always turn on that setting now when it comes to some of the requests that i have for my device especially now that we have continuity camera in safari i mean in facetime for example you can see for me here my video is coming from my mac but if i wanted to change this i can go to video and i can choose my 
iPhone camera and you can see that boom it's changed and it's now on my iPhone camera and boom that's that's the iPhone camera that you are seeing there and this is all courtesy of Mac OS Ventura so that's something that's new if you want to also basically be able to change your microphone input from the default Mac to like the iPhone for example maybe you want to use your Mac in a big setting where you have a large meeting room and you want to have the Mac at the front of the desk and the iPhone perhaps center in the middle of the table so that perhaps it catches more voices or perhaps you want to pass the iPhone closer to whoever is speaking in the meeting then you can also change your microphone input by going where it says system settings and then if you go to where it says sounds you can see here you have the ability to change your input sound so you can see here for me i have it selected as the macbook input sound but if i wanted to select my iphone 14 pro microphone as the input then i can select that and you can you do hear a little chime that tells you that yes the mic has changed and has gone to the inbuilt microphone of the iphone so that's how you do it it's pretty easy and simple to do actually so something else that i wanted to show you it's here in the official release of mac os ventura but if you don't know you can change some of your mail settings if you go into your open up your mail app and go to the settings that you see there and i just want to put this iphone here on the side so that it's out of the way but if you go into where it says general you can see that here you have the ability to allow for follow-ups so enable message follow-ups and it says mail will remind you about messages that haven't received responses so if it, it, it feels that an email you send or you received needs a response back then it will enable this and then it will give you a prompt to remind you that hey perhaps it's time to respond or send a follow-up email to a particular email that you might be you you might have sent if you go to the composing subsection here you can see we have undo send delay and this is a setting that you can change from 10 seconds to 20 seconds to 30 seconds or even to off so if you want to be able to have the ability to unsend an email after you've sent it out then this is a setting that you can always change and change the timer that allows you to be to be able and change the timer that allows you to be able to do the unsend option so basically those are just some of the minor new changes that are here when it comes to mac os ventura 13.1 it's more of a security update and just patches some of the vulnerabilities that are here but there are some settings that you can change to better enhance your experience and these are just a few of the many changes that you can change when it comes to your mac so that's about it for me guys when it comes to this update do let me know whatever you want to see when it comes to mac os 13.1 and other than that stay safe and i'll see you in the next video peace